Hey everyone, welcome back to Static Cardiology here on EMTV. I'll be giving you an ECG rhythm and a scenario. On the bottom of the screen you'll see a timer for 1 minute and 30 seconds. This time closely resembles the actual amount of time you should be spending on each card during an actual National Registry exam. When the time is finished, I'll be giving you an answer as well as the treatment. Good luck. 3, 2, 1. Just like we always do here on Static Cardiology, let's go ahead and look at the actual rhythm to see if we can identify it. Right away here you can tell that the rate is pretty slow. This is a 6 second strip, so I'm only counting 4 QRS complexes, so my rate here is going to be 40 BPM. Next thing I'll look at is the actual pattern, make sure this is a regular rhythm. The R to R interval here, very consistent, no real deviation from the intervals. Next thing I'm going to look at is a QRS complex. This is a fairly narrow QRS complex, which is normal. What's sticking out for me though is the PR interval. Now the PR interval is very, very long. It actually takes up about eight small boxes. And we know that each one of these small boxes is equal to 0.04. Eight times 0.04 of course is 0.32 or 32 milliseconds. A normal duration for a PR interval should be anywhere from 0.12 to 0.20. Because I have a prolonged PR interval here that is consistent, my diagnosis is going to be a first degree AV block. Next, let's go ahead and take a look at the scenario. So we're dispatched to a private residence for a possible suicide attempt. Our patient is a 28 year old male who admits to ingesting at least 50 of his family members metoprolol tablets and a bottle of vodka one hour ago. Metoprolol of course are beta blockers which would explain the slow heart rate. Your patient is confused and pale but has no obvious signs of trauma. Vital signs are as follows, blood pressure 78 over 22, heart rate of 40, SpO2 92% on room air, respirations 11 and blood sugar of 106. Now remember. Static cardiology isn't just about identifying the rhythm, it's providing the correct treatment based on the patient's condition. For this, we need to decide if the patient is stable or unstable. For unstable criteria, I use the acronym CHAD, and this stands for cardiac insufficiency, hypotension, alteration of mental status, and dyspnea. Based on this patient's current presentation, as well as vital signs, my final diagnosis for static cardiology is going to be an unstable first degree AV block. Let's now look at the treatment. For the treatment of this patient, I'll begin just like I do with every other static cardiology card by reciting the mantra, scene safe, BSI, IV O2 monitor. Although this patient is unstable, ACLS algorithms dictate that I should at least consider 
one milligram of atropine IV push. But definitive treatment here is going to be electricity, because as the old saying goes, unstable gets the cable. For this patient, because it's bradycardic, I'm going to select the pacer function. I'm then going to select a rate, anywhere between 60 and 100 pulses per minute, and then I'm going to increase my energy, my milliamperage, until I get electrical capture, and then I'm going to check a pulse to make sure I have mechanical capture. I could then consider giving glucagon 2 to 5 milligrams IV push, as this is the reversal agent for beta blockers, as well as calcium channel blockers. So if you ever dealt a patient who has a calcium channel blocker or a beta blocker overdose, glucagon is one of the medications that you should consider using. For the last cherry on top, I could also say I'm going to consider some vasopressors. And then of course, rapid transport. All right, and that's it. If you like this video, please make sure to subscribe to my channel for more static cardiology. And remember, you can make your own custom playlist using my cards to make decks for you to study for your National Registry exam too. Until I see you next, have a good rest of your night.